Wowee, what a good looking header. We'll show you how it's done. Bob starts by adding two containers. The first, the outer container, will be used for the background. The second, the inner container, will be set as the actual grid to position the page content. Selectors are applied to each item, with the heading elements sharing the common Hero Text class. A third container is then added as a wrapper for the text. You can drag and drop the text from the canvas into the new container, or you can rearrange the elements from the DOM tree. Next, the placeholder image and text are replaced with real content. Right-click or triple-click on screen to launch the inline text editor. Using the element drop-down on the canvas, select the inner container. The width dimensions are set to take up 98% of the outer container, as well as centered by setting the auto to the right and left margins. Using the element tree, select the outer container to apply background styles such as a purple gradient. The color picker really rocks. Choose your colors from the wheel and save them to your palette to reuse them throughout your project. Before we move on, Bob adds a few styles to the text to give it a nicer appearance. To style each hero text independently, additional selectors are applied. Be sure to click to disable the common selector before applying unique styles to the second class. Font types, colors, line spacing, margins and padding, you can go wild. Yep, you may have noticed, while Bob was recording, he couldn't think of any good semantic selectors to use. The design calls for two more main images. So with the grid container selected, a full height of 100 is applied. Then the image on the canvas is duplicated twice. Select each image and swap out the graphics. Then add secondary selectors to each one so that we can work on them individually.
With the content in place, we are ready to configure the grid. Choose the inner container from the element tree and launch the grid editor. We have four elements to position. That's three images plus a container of text. Each element will take up one content cell in the grid. But by applying some height to the second and third row, in this case, 60 pixels, an overlap will be created. This will give us the layered image appearance for mobile devices. Deselect the common hero image selector to apply width constraints to each individual graphic. Center all three images at once by applying the auto setting to the left and right margin to their common hero image selector. Use the slider to expand to the first breakpoint. Then add a bit of spacing to the hero grid container. Continue sliding to the second breakpoint and relaunch the grid editor to adjust content positioning. Let's set up a new grid structure. Add four columns, setting the outermost to take up a width of 20%. The inner two columns are then set to divide the remainder of the available space using the FR unit. Then remove two rows. Automatically, each item is placed into the cells. Using the grid controls, they can be specifically positioned. The first item, the hero text container, is set to stretch full screen by making it start at line 1 and end at line 5. Changing the position of the images is next. Set them to start at line 2 and end at line 4. Move the images vertically by changing the start and end position of the row. Since they share the same selector, it will apply to them all causing you to only see the top image on the canvas. To bring the hidden images into view on the design, select them from the element tree. Activate their individual selector, then change their grid column start and stop locations to move them outward. Select the inner container and launch the grid editor. Then set the alignment for items within the grid in the flex end position. With the content in position for small and large screens, all that's left to do is tweak the design. Experimenting using the visual design controls makes it easy to try out new looks. Here, Bob adjusts the image sizes for better alignment and adds shadow on top to create perspective.
Grab that viewport slider to see how your design magically changes between the screen sizes. Nice! Bob launches the grid editor again to slightly adjust the cell height for both the mobile and desktop grid configurations. The layout is done, and at this point, Bob is just fine-tuning the styles and adding fun transitions. Continue watching to see how he does it, or launch the Grid Builder app to get cooking with it yourself. Ooh, looks like Bob changed his mind on a few style choices. Using the reset button, he is able to remove these unwanted styles individually, which helps keep the project code squeaky clean. By changing the state of an item to out of view, you can set how the item will look before it is visible to the viewer. Then set actions like transitions to take effect after a certain duration once the content comes into view. In this case, the images are pushed down behind the front image and made to gradually appear when the page loads. These types of animations will up your design game and make your content truly pop. Plus, they're fun to do. Finally, Bob makes similar out-of-view transitions for the wider layout. Then voila! Here you have an astonishing and professional page heading crafted in less than 15 minutes. Hope you enjoyed!